What's the crack and welcome back to Open Studio, lads. It's been a minute. I've just been up to me eyes, sorting everything else out regarding the clothing, and my partner is also setting up a business, so I've been helping her out with that as much as I can. A lot of work going into Open Attire there. In the past couple of weeks, I've been doing a lot of courses, a lot of theory work, a lot of designing, minor fracturing, everything, reaching out to different people, trying to just trying to get as much help as possible. I just I want people to take these t-shirts off me and put them in cafes tattoo shops barbers gyms anywhere i can put this clothing that is suitable for the clothing i want it in there to help spread the word a lot quicker today's video is something different it's the first episode of urban culture this here is like a mini interview series i'm going to be planning to do i'm hoping to keep them short less than 20 minutes long talking about your upbringing what inspires them in whatever area they're in for example we had on sam from the pyrobot and he is not only a content creator but he's also a photographer that's enough from me let's get straight into the video what's happening bro how are you all good sam all good I'll tell you i'm just watching your what seems to be your first video or your oldest video might, might not be your first <laughs> but your oldest Jesus video Christ. on uh, on youtube Christ. it's uh, the conor Rob. mcgregor and Dustin. Mm. i just I, I, uh, I went back there and had a gander at uh, how long you've been doing content it seems to be three years ago uh, yeah, that was COVID. That was COVID, man. COVID. That's when a lot of people yeah. started, isn't it? But I think a lot yeah. of that will come up now in this. Uh, the question. Love it, bro. Excited. So, so, so number one would be your background and your upbringing. Can you tell us a bit about your upbringing and how it shaped you into being who you are today? Yeah. So I was born in Knockline. That was where I grew up till I was then eleven, and um, and then uh, my parents actually separated when I was like eleven or twelve, and dad ended up being like. We moved out of our family home. Dad got a, a new gaff and he's now like remarried and stuff like that. But that that period was uh, like a period of adjustment. I moved from where I was originally living in Knockline, had a group of friends and all that stuff, and um, moved to a different part of Dublin. Was going to go to a completely different school, and kind of at that moment had like a I don't know. I guess like a little my my first little panic of being like I just made all these friends. They like me. I get on with them. I know. Like, I'm, I'm part of this little group and then that all kind of got separated and we go to a different school and um, and then it ended up that 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 move ended up being like one of the the best things i ended up going to uh, wesley college and volunteer which is like a, a very good school and um, that my parents like worked very hard to put me through and at the time those were the conversations we were having i wanted to go to the community school and not line where all my friends were going and they'd insisted like even financially like it wasn't the best time for them to be committing to something like that and they still did it and put me through six years of school same as my brother and it was kind of the making of me to be honest that was like um like made a whole different group of friends got to pretty much all my interests that kind of i didn't have before was very into sports and then when i went into wesley there was much more like drama media more creative um, chan yeah chances to kind of express yourself maybe a little bit more which is something i didn't do a lot of when i was younger i didn't do like choirs it just wasn't there wasn't in my school in my primary school and yeah. it was all about sports and i was so into that and even in Wesley, they don't have football, which is what I play primarily. They had like rugby and hockey and stuff like that. So it's kind of a bit of a culture shock, even even in that, just kind of adapting to different stuff. But um, it was it was the making of me. And as I said, like the getting into the dramatics, I guess sounds mad, but like that actually was the first thing that I was like, I really love this kind of live aspect of being in front of people and entertaining. And that uh, that wouldn't have come if I hadn't gone to Wesley. There just isn't the opportunities like that. So it o it's only really now at 29 that i can look back and be like shit if that hadn't happened my life could be completely different you know what i mean it was the best call like and i've said yeah. to my parents since i was like jesus because i was i was a bastard man when i was yeah. when i was younger when that when that originally that was happening i was like look you can take me to whatever school you like i'm, I'm going to column kills on september 1st for my first day that's where i'm going and uh it wasn't good for a while like obviously i had a lot of like resentment towards my parents and stuff for separating and everything like that and even through that like they were so good at just prioritizing we need to make sure we get you in the best spot wherever that is and um, yeah, yeah it worked out for the best man how old were you if you don't want me asking join that 11 11 yeah and then my brother was eight or nine right so like old enough old enough to like know what's going on and recognize that like you know stuff's changing and but maybe not old enough to be able to digest like you know yeah. why now, now obviously i can look back and be like jesus it was the best thing for everyone but at the time you're just like everything i know is now going to be completely different you know what i mean influence on urban culture how would 
urban culture influence you in your personal life and your professional life? So I know you do with the photography as well. That's right, isn't it? Yeah, it's videography more so now. I, def I started as photography and then kind of transitioned into yeah, video. Yeah. And that's kind of what I'm doing now professionally. So I suppose your upbringing there, especially experimenting in drama, even at a young age, 11 would be fairly a young age to pick a mm. hobby that you're still doing now, more or less. How mm. has that kind of influenced you in your personal life as well as your professional life, though? I would say, like, in terms of cities in general i've lived in a couple of different cities now i had a chance to live in vancouver and um, i had a chance to live i lived over in my bay for a while i've been to new york and all that kind of stuff and then i think the nice thing about dublin that i'm kind of learning now with the podcast is there's such a diversity of characters in a city yeah. so like there's even in, in on one street or on one stretch of podcast that i can do all people from dublin can have completely different things going on whether that's you know, starting out a business as someone that's younger, following professional sports, going into like drama and music, all those kind of things. There's so many people pursuing lots of different things in a city, which I love. And that's kind of allowed me to, I guess, offer some variety on my interviews and like try to get people from all aspects of life. And that's kind of one thing I'm trying to do a lot with my podcast is not get the same faces that you yeah. see on the podcast circuit every, you know, whatever it is when people are trying to promote something. I really try to make a conscious effort to either get guys that don't do a lot of podcasts or ones that haven't done one in a long time just so that the answers that are coming out aren't being you know regurgitated and people aren't yeah, getting yeah. the same stuff you know and um, but it's harder as more people have podcasts more people are trying to get into content that it's you know it's hard to you need to build these relationships with people yeah and i guess that's yeah. kind of where that, that's where the photography and videography came in is like as a business, I meet a lot of people that are investing in content for whatever reason, whether that's for their own businesses, whether it's for social media, whatever. And, and a great chance for me to kind of pivot that onto my podcast is to be like, look, I do a podcast, great chance to tell your story, get a chance to you know get clips out of it, get some exposure. So I think me being able to offer value to people is, is a way for me to then transition into going onto my podcast and living in a city or something like Dublin, where there's so many, you know, there's guys, there's obviously content wise, there's tech companies like crazy, there's events, there's entrepreneurs, there's social media. So I think the chance to be able to work in such a variety of projects wouldn't happen unless I was living in a city, particularly like Dublin. I think if you, if you were living in, you know, Cork or Galway, while there's a ton of culture there and, um, just the population of people there's obviously a lot more competition and maybe not as much variety as you'd like to get yeah, especially yeah, with, yeah. if i if i want to do an episode a week you know there's only so many people you can get on but in dublin there's just i can go down a hundred different niches and find five or ten guys or girls that want to come on you know every business no matter what you're doing everyone is doing some sort of content around it so that it's, there it's helps all, you it's, as well it's stories do you know what i mean yeah it's, it's stories it's, of and like that started and stuff exactly and like anyone's yeah. story no matter what it is whether like i had luke joyce on who is a has a uh a, a window washing company and does like roofing cleaning and all that kind of stuff just as he has owns the cleaning company and then um, on paper you'd be like not a probably not a ton of like interesting stuff on that and it was genuinely one of my favorite episodes he'd like he'd worked on the farm with his dad developed this insane work ethic transition that work ethic into a job and a business that he saw like growth in and yeah. went 100 percent at it and like he's he's blowing up man do you know what i mean he's 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 gonna have like i think he's doing it seven figures this year so those kind of ones and like the unsexy ones i guess you could say those are kind of the ones i seem to be getting the most out of especially yeah. people who don't who don't do it a lot and don't their, their answers don't seem as scripted they haven't done this a ton to be able to develop these kind of ways of telling their stories and it just becomes it comes off much more authentic you know which brings us on to the next one what was your inspiration for starting to do interviews and what do you enjoy the most about it so yeah as you said when we started i started the podcast in covid and i'd been saying for i basically got into videography and i started doing content for everyone else like making content for other people and in a lot of cases i'll be like yeah, we've the same bottle that's hilarious and he's finest when I went to, uh, when I started doing content for the people and then I had the, I obviously had the know-how to be able to edit, to be able to shoot, I'd shot podcasts for the people and I'd always wanted to do content. Like you'll find, I did like a couple of vlogs during COVID and stuff. I was just trying to yeah. find like where I kind of fit and where my content could fit. And I ended up doing a podcast with, I think the first one was my mate Phil, who has a personal training business. And I did one with him in my sitting room and set it up and it looked like, honestly it looked great for my first one and everything kind of worked. And then since then, it's all kind of spiraled. Like it's mad to say that was three years ago because that was 
like that's mental. That period was during COVID. I had a period doing podcasts in Marbella and then I'm now back in Dublin and this is kind of my, my next season in Dublin. But um, the motivation to do it was I was like, I'm not waiting any longer. Um, it's, getting too, it's, getting too, it's getting too late. I have the opportunity to do it now. There's going to be excuses why not to do it every time. You know, people are going, I'm only going to get busier. And yeah, it was, I didn't want to genuinely sound mad cheesy. I didn't want to sit down in five years and be like, man, I should have started that. Or I see five other podcasts set up and I go, man, I could do that job better. I can do it to a higher quality and I'm not doing it just because the, you know, it might be difficult at the start. And uh, so, yeah, so even if it's not, you know, even if it doesn't go where I want it to go, I, I know I'll sleep well being like, yeah, I tried and I gave, gave my all. I think that's all you can do, you know. Just going back to your uh, your McGregor video, that's more like um, a solo podcast. Like, I, I don't really call them podcasts. I call them a web show. I don't know what it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. I think when yeah, there's yeah, some yeah. people start podcasts, it's like, I'm not doing a podcast, it's a web show. But yeah. they, they are the kind of same, you know. I might get up and dance a little bit to try and make it sound different. But um, what what would you rather, personally, would you rather do, like, say, your solo podcast talking one on one with the camera about a certain topic, or would you rather say, like, an interview style? I'd say the interview. I think I'm better bringing the best out of someone else i think that's where i i kind of flourish yeah and the, I, the, I don't know if you want the solo ones with crap man jesus christ i don't have enough originally i was like one of my big like passions i guess is mma like big mma follower and um, love talking about the sport all that kind of stuff and but the reality is there's there's 10 other people there are 50 other people who do mma content who do it better who are more knowledgeable on it who are going to upload more consistently who have a bigger passion for it I could put out content more consistently, but if you look at the success of those episodes versus the podcast I'm doing now with guests, it's like night and day in terms of like reach, in terms of views, in terms of the social content and views with that. And I enjoy it more. I get more out of it. I feel that kind of buzz I felt doing like shows or doing like plays or whatever, that kind of nervousness beforehand, the feeling of performance. I get that with a guest. I wasn't getting that on the solo ones. It might come back later on. And one of the, the things I'm seeing online now with a lot of podcasts is they have a a members only, a Patreon, something like that, uh, something past a paywall. And they do yeah. solo content like that for their more, I guess, guests that are more in or members that are more keen on it. That could happen. I could see that happening. The value of being able to do content yourself is is like night and day. Like you see guys who are doing even like food reviews on TikTok and stuff like that. Lads just film themselves. Like there's endless amounts of content you can film. So if, if volume is your game, you can just bang them out. Yeah. And uh, it's great. Like that's like, you know, I had a guest cancel on me today for a podcast. It happens all the time. People have stuff going on. Yeah, of course. Obviously, yeah. So like it, that's obviously a part of it. And that, that puts a delay on my content strategy and stuff. But I'm trying to do a, a, a quality versus quantity thing, especially for the interviews. And yeah, I, I see way, I see way more value even in like the episodes where I'm like waiting a couple of weeks to do it, those episodes do better because the guest is, is someone that'll work well on my channel. Which brings us on to the next question, more or less. It's like, what is, you were saying that you sometimes just wait weeks on a guest. Who was the most, no disrespect to anyone else either, but who was the most memorial, like kind of guest you have on, the most memorial moment you've had on where you've really connected with one of your guests and has, has any of them got really emotional? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I've had, I'm delighted to say, like, I, that's that's probably the biggest thing about the podcast that, like, I can't quite put, get my head around is, like, people are willing to be, like, vulnerable. Um, just like yeah. me, like a random a random bloke, not a huge platform. Um, but I met this guy in Marbella who was, like, he was from Sweden. And we just started chatting. We were in one of the coffee shops there. And he had seen a clip of mine from an episode I'd done with another guy from Marbella. And he was like, look, if you ever want to... A guest I used to do like kickboxing and um, I used to fight in like glory and stuff like that. And like now I have a good story about going sober and addiction problems and stuff. And he came on, he came over to my house on like a Wednesday and we did like a two hour podcast and he like emptied his soul pretty much. Real dark, heavy stuff about, you know, suicidal thoughts and like days that he had like that and the going sober process and all those kind of things. And um, his name is Teddy, Teddy Hulgerson. And uh, that was that was a great episode. That's the only one I've ever done like that, where it just got you know it got real. And then um, I'm trying to think of ones I've done recently that that really clicked. I think maybe I had Wheelo on. I don't know if you know who the Wheelo fella is, but um, yeah, I do. Yeah. I do. I do TRE for him, um, which is like a, a show he does, and I produce Train for recovery him. And he came and on the podcast. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he he came on and I didn't really know his story at all. I just knew him from our working relationship over the last year or so and kind of hearing his story from like start 
start to finish. Um, like, I think that's the best thing is like, I get to build such great relationships with so many people just because, you know, they're coming on the podcast and yes, it's content and all that kind of stuff. But at the end of it, like I, I hug most, most of my guests afterwards just to be like, geez, man, like how many times do I sit down and chat to someone for two hours and just get to pick out different areas of their life? And it's not always the heavy stuff that like I enjoy, like that's obviously an important part. And I, I do see the value in that because someone needs to be talking about that stuff. And especially if the guest is comfortable too. But then also, like, I just had Cameron Watson on, who's like an upcoming um, uh, like producer. And his dad, I didn't, I had no idea, but his dad, Dublin, like one of the, the only ones there were. And again, I, I, the, the views on that clip did so well. And it was because people were like, How, uh, we never would have heard of this. Why did you never talk about this? What an amazing part of your story. So I think being able to do that and like give people a chance to, show themselves off in a different light in a platform they probably mightn't have done before. I think that's also like unreal. And that, that ha happens in most episodes. What has been some challenges you face on your journey? Obviously you're saying you could be waiting weeks on someone and they could cancel. What, what do you do in the meantime then? Do you just sit and wait or is there anything, do you have say a list of people there, something like this, do you jump on other people's kind of podcast in the meantime or what's your way around it to keep your content flowing that? A steady pace it's it's hard it's kind of like i i kind of take it as it comes i appreciate that i can't offer you know i can't offer payment all that kind of stuff so like we're, i can't do that right now so they're giving me their time so i can only i i have to appreciate stuff comes up a lot of these guys run their own companies um run their own businesses and stuff like that and they're they're putting out time for me so um i guess that's kind of the thing that frustrates me is i want to be more consistent with my episodes where possible i'd love to be once a week there's something coming out but right now like everything is done by me so like there is no i don't have any other people helping from doing the editing anything like that and everything that done is comes out from me whether that's like social media the episodes themselves all that kind of stuff and being able to do that while managing like my own business that i'm trying to grow um, you know, I have a couple of other like full-time jobs to try and fit, fit in as well. And I'm, I guess the thing I'm struggling with or have struggled with is just trying to give everything a little bit of nourishment. Do you know what I mean? Give the yeah. pair pod the time to grow, put time into that. But it seems whenever I put a lot of time into pair pod and I'm very consistent with my podcast, maybe my pair creative business isn't getting as many leads as it once did. Maybe my other full-time job isn't getting as, as much success. And, you know, it's strong trying to find the balance of all these things and try not to let one thing go neglected for too long. I, I don't want to get to the point where I'm like, who can I fit in here to, f to, to meet my upload schedule? If it's yeah. not going to be someone I feel like is going to be my next best episode, you know? Yeah, of course. So even that there, that was more or less some advice for other aspiring interviewers, but what would be say the main piece of advice you would give to aspiring interviewers, if not, a few I, little I would tips say like, if that was the main one you know that is a big one now it's just not not to rush yes yeah, but I, w I would say try and like for, for me try and find the value in in like the the every man a little bit and try and find the value in because there's there's everyone as we talked about earlier everyone's got a story and like there's there's value in literally any any story someone's gone through whether it was Luke Joyce working on the farm and learning his work ethic through getting up at three in the morning to go milk the cows and like now for him getting up at four in the morning to go to work is like oh i get an extra hour in bed and that's just because of the way he grew up and there's there's hints like that in every single person that i've interviewed and i guess i've i'm trying to now steer away from the people that have you know just because they have a large social platform and could drive a lot of traffic because some of the the best clips i've put out have been regular people talking about you know whether it's like even chris connolly who i had on like 5k with chris who i'm sure you've you've seen yeah um I had him on and he'd be another guy who just like bared his soul basically for an hour and a half um, just to give me a good episode. But again, like Chris, Chris, when, when I met him, he was in my gym and he wasn't quite where he was on the content level now that he is now. He was just kind of starting it. And my, I saw one of his first videos, which was like just him recording on like his phone in his room, like telling a story. It was, it was, he was just starting his running stuff. And, um, but I was like, the stuff he's saying just from going from a, a time of addiction to sober he he could have talked for hours just on that topic and all the learnings he's had and all the different scenarios he found himself in and i think what i'm going to try and do now is i don't know if you've seen like theo vaughn's podcast like he'll have on like 
uh, he'll have on huge guests, he'll have on, you know, huge celebrities, and then he'll have, like, a uh, mall cop. And some of those episodes are, are some of his best ones. And, like, the comments under those are, like, these episodes where you just get to see a different perspective on life versus what are you doing for your social media content right now, which is a lot of podcasts, like, every influencer seems to have one now. What are your future plans and goals for your podcast alone? I would say I'd love to get to the point where I'm monetizing the podcast. That's That's been like the goal since I started was to get to the point where the pair pod can be earning an income, whatever that is. Um, but the reality of doing that means I need to start carving out more time to put into the podcast. And that's like outreaching to sponsors, getting my consistency going, um, you know, doing some extra content. Right, lads, that was Sam. What a fucking man. He is a legend. The conversation did go on for a lot longer than I was able to get into the video. And not only that, it clicked. It just went off. So there's about 10 or 15 minutes of mine and Sam's conversation that's just gone, vanished, never to be found again. I don't know what happened. But guys, Sam is a fucking legend. He did tell me in the video, I put him on blast, I told him, stick to the YouTube shorts. And I said, put one up today and he went and he done it so fair play to sam lads make sure that you do go and subscribe to sam all of his handles are below and make sure you're subscribed here for more episodes of urban culture and many more guys thanks for watching don't forget we're the street all right gentlemen i want you to repeat after me just how i do it ready rock da 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 da